There are so many ways to achieve that vintage look and it all depends on the material. Hi, I'm Julie Faith Van Balzer and we begin today with stenciling, one of my absolute favorite things. So stencils are great because they allow you to create art without having to do any work, which I think is amazing. So I'm gonna use an overall pattern stencil, but you could certainly use something that was like a picture of something, a plant, a bee. You could use a stencil that you made. You could use a stencil that you found. But the basics are, I'm working with a piece of paper towel because this is gonna get a little bit messy. A piece of paper, you want a heavier piece of paper because we are gonna be working with modeling paste. And in case you were wondering, modeling paste and molding paste are actually the same thing. For some reason, some companies call it one thing, other companies call it the other thing, but it's all the same stuff but it's this luscious, thick, frosting-like stuff. And what it does is it dries dimensionally. So because it dries dimensionally, however we frost it on through the stencil, that is exactly what you're gonna see. Now, if you've ever done any cake decorating, you can see that the tool that I'm using looks like an offset spatula. That's what you might use to decorate the edges of the cake. But this is a palette knife, and it allows me to sort of scrape everything through the stencil so that I don't waste any of my material material. And you can see I'm not rushing through it. I'm going nice and slow. And if you even look inside this jar, what you can see is that the molding paste or the modeling paste stays exactly the way that you put it. If you do a huge peak, it is going to stay exactly like that. So when I remove this stencil, and by the way, if you have any excess, you can actually scrape it back and then put it back in the jar to use the next time. So I love that because it's a little bit thrifty. Now, when I pull the stencil off, this is the magic moment where you can see I have a beautiful, crisp design. Now, part of the reason that the design is so crisp on here is because modeling paste has a very low water in it, and so it doesn't run under the stencil at all, so you always get a nice result. Now, the thing is, you can get different results depending on the modeling paste that you start with. So, for example, if I move this out of the way, you'll see here is the white paste that we used, and here is the exact same stencil, but this time it's done with a copper modeling paste. Now these are both dry. I can touch them, there's absolutely no problem. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distress both of them the exact same way, and you'll see what the difference is depending on the color you start with. So, I like to use a very heavy paint. So I'm actually using gesso, and I'm using this incredible tool that I have attached to my hand. And what I'm gonna do is, I wanna use my finger because I really wanna hit the tops of everything with this gold as my first layer. And this is what is going to create a sort of aged and distressed look. It's like something that you found that once was gilded and beautiful and has turned into something different. And now even though this already has copper on it, I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm just gonna rub over it with some gold gesso. You could also use a gold heavy body paint, anything like that. You just wanna get some bling into there so that it kind of sits on there and you're smooshing it around so it's not too thick a layer. Because you can see when I do that, it sort of clings to the edges and it's already starting to look kind of distressed. You actually don't want to do a good job. You kind of want to do a bad job because that's part of distressing is that it looks really old, like something you found. So then the next step is when you think of things that are old and like at the bottom of the ocean or something like that, I personally think of like blacks and greens and blues, dark, rich colors. So I'm gonna mix up a couple different colors here. I'm gonna put out some black paint. And just a fun tip is I like to use gray palette paper because you see color much more clearly when it's on gray as opposed to when it's on a white, right? Because you don't really see the true color. So when I'm trying to mix things and I wanna see them, gray works for me. Now you can see here I've put out black, dark green, and a gold. And what I'm gonna do with my brush is I'm gonna get some water and then I want to play around, not with a straight black, but by mixing a little bit of green in there to give it almost a verdigris feel. And verdigris is what we call when um, copper starts to patina. And I'm going to add some gold in there. This is part of the antiquing process. And then, even though this is wet, it's totally fine. We're going to go ahead with the brush and see how it has that kind of 
mm, ancient, like gnarled under the ocean kind of feel to it and add a lot of water, okay? And the good and fabulous news is it's gonna look like a hot mess for a while. And that is what you want. You want it to have that feeling. Now the reason I didn't mix a huge pile of paint is because I actually want color variation. See how I'm mixing more black into this now. I don't want to use one flat color because if I did want to use one flat color, then I just would have taken a bottle of that color of paint and used it. The point of mixing your own paints is so that you get a lot of color variation. So you can see that it's the same color, but it's like maybe a shade darker, which is exactly what we want. And you could do the opposite, which is let's say add more green and gold. Okay. And now you're going to get to get another variation on that theme. And if I put that same color, okay, we're working with the same color, but on top of the copper, I think what you'll see is that we're gonna get an even different variation. Now, here's an interesting tip. I am using a relatively small brush because if you compare the two brushes that I have here, you can see that one is significantly larger. So why on this big piece of paper am I using a little brush? Well, it's because what I want to happen as I work in here is I only want to make sure that I'm hitting small areas. If you use a huge brush and hit the whole thing, it won't have all that those yummy little brush strokes that all also add to the age and distressed look that you're going for. And you can see that by using a lot of water, what happens is the paint actually slides away from some of those raised edges and instead sinks into your paper. So the copper tends to show through a little bit more and it even happens over here in the white area as well where you're seeing it just slip away because of all of that water, which is exactly what we want. So the other thing that I like to do to kind of just stress it out too, is I like to get my brush nice and wet and flick. I find that the flicks add an enormous amount of texture. Now, if you get too much paint, just take a baby wipe or a paper towel and you can start to rub off kind of on the tops and dab at it and it will come right back to looking like something else that you wanted. Look how that modeling paste just shines up but the green stays in the background. Sometimes I will even take a little bit of white paint because actually if you believe it, you know, white is kind of a distress color. We think of it as only as dark colors and I'll rub it into some places and then just take a wet brush and kind of fade it out. And you can see when you look at these pieces that it looks like I have done so much rust and distress and aging and I've really done nothing at all except play with layers of paint.